Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. And this is Peter. Today we're going to check out the new Apple iPad Mini against the iPad with Retina Display or the Apple iPad 3. We're going to compare the hardware, software, show you how ebooks, magazines, and a whole bunch of media content looks. The Mini features a 7.9 inch display with a resolution of 1024 by 768. It's about 0.9 inches bigger than a traditional Android tablet. You look at, say, the Kindle Fire HD or the Barnes & Noble Nook Tablet HD, they're all pretty well 7 inches, so this is a little bit bigger. It's not necessarily a bad thing at all. That, whereas the Apple iPad 3 features a 9.7 inch screen and the resolution is 2048 by 1536. They both feature the same dual core processor, although the iPad 3 has a quad core graphics processor. Uh, they all come in various models in terms of memory, 1632 or 64 gigs. Wi-Fi or 3G LTE. It depends on uh, what type of model you pick up, but of course it has Bluetooth 4.0 and they both have front and rear facing cameras. Peter here is going to show you the full 360 and hardware comparison. They look pretty much the same except the Apple iPad uh, Apple button is wider than that one, but there's more differences. Um, the iPad 3 looks more 4x3 because it's more of a square, whereas the iPad mini is actually going more of the 16x9 uh, route. So, looking at them head-on, they both have cameras up top, both have the piano glass finish kind of thing, very nice and reflective, home buttons. On the right side of the iPad mini, you get volume up and down, and you get the, uh, the switch that can be assigned to, doing, to do different things. On the top, you get 3.5 mil headphone jack. You also get microphone, rear-facing camera, and the uh, power button slash standby button. Nothing much going on on the right side. And look at this. Twin speakers, so you're getting stereo sound out of it. And you have the lightning connector on this device instead of the traditional Apple 30 pin. And here is the back. Now for the Apple iPad. Speaking of 30 pin... Um, and, and the lightning connector. Show us the thing on the iPad 3. Yeah, absolutely. See, it's quite different. So you're dealing with much different ports on both. I, I, I definitely dig the new lightning connector. I think it's smaller and it, it allows the devices to be a little bit more thinner. Absolutely. Uh, you also have the one speaker with really tiny holes cut out, so the audio uh, quality isn't the greatest on the Apple iPad, uh, hence the dual speaker upgrade. Volume up and down, that switch, rear-facing camera, power button, 3.5mm headphone jack, and nothing on the right. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the back. While you do have this metallic, aluminum-esque look to this one, you don't quite get that on this. It's not really that metallic at all. It's more of just a dark gray. Although they are both very nice and, of course, use very high-quality parts, plastics, and glass. Okay, next we're going to look at the software experience. As you can see, there's a lot of similarities between the home screen uh, UI. You know, you have FaceTime, you have the new Apple Maps, iTunes, App Store. There's really nothing that really is different between the two. No, uh, everything's laid out the same. Uh, the kind of go-to buttons at the bottom are the same. Um, clock, all the kind of task bars, all the apps. It's basically just a smaller iPad, so. Yeah. But we're not going to end the review there, so yeah, we'll exactly. continue. <laughs> But, you know, here's how it looks on, on both devices so you can see how the, the store visually looks from the iPad with Retina display here on the right and the Apple iPad mini on the left. So the, the primary thing with the iPad is it just as superior resolution. And you're going to see that with a number of the tests that we're going to do. Of course, we're good at re goody readers, so we're going to put the priority on ebooks. Uh, what we're going to do is load up the iBooks application. Okay. Oh, wow, look. See, I beat you too and I didn't even touch it. Yeah. 
Must be nice. You can see the uh, highlights are synchronized as well. Yeah, I, that's the thing with Apple iCloud, which is cool. Any notes, uh, annotations, everything that you do is pretty well brought from the device to device. So on my iPod Touch, I would open up this book. I would see the exact same thing. I would open it, and it would go to the exact same page. How is the reading experience? They both do their nice and fancy page turn animations, which are always fun to play around with. I always take great joy in this here at Goody Reader. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, and for the reading experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the review. So you can uh, change the text, of course. Pretty much the, well, they are the same application, so you're going to get the same uh, customizationable settings on both. Live text, size changes. You got fonts for font styles. We'll go. I noticed automatically it. when I first started reading on the iPad Mini is it's a smaller screen, and so I did have to increase the size of the fonts a little bit more in order for it to be more pronounced. Like it's about the same size here. That's readable. That's not. You're gonna have to up the font. There we go. In that, in order to really kind of get the, you know this sort of experience. We also have themes, of course, if you're reading at night. Some people might like it, some people don't, but uh, they do have it available for you. Uh, with the most recent Apple update, you know, you now have the scrolling function. So it, it kind of just scrolls like web pages do. So it's kind of as if the entire book is pre-rendered and ready to go rather than you having to turn pages. Yeah, totally. So it's a little bit easier because you could just like read read and then you don't have to deal with sort of that animated page turns or if you're reading in a landscape mode and you have sort of that dual book appearance this is a little bit easier this won't appeal to everybody but it'll appeal to some and it's uh, a welcome feature with iBooks because it's pretty well the only app out there that has like a continuous scrolling feature pretty much uh, colored highlights of course yep. that's one of the the focuses with uh, iBooks and no other really e-reading app allows you to really kind of do that so it's useful for textbooks, for book clubs. Yeah, you can always assign something for, if, say, if homework assigns it says, you know, uh, all the highlights in green are relevant for this and blue relevant for that. So it does give you a little bit of flexibility rather than it just being grayed out or just the traditional yellow. Yeah. Obviously, this is a little bit thinner, obviously, than the iPad with Retina display. I do enjoy reading this in my lap a little bit more than this. This kind of gets heavy in one hand over time. This is light. I can hold this with one hand and just, like, read. And I, I kind of like the manual page turns because I could hold it and then, like, click the page with my thumb. If I'm continuous scrolling, it's, you know, not the easiest mm -hmm. way to read, like, in one hand if you're, like, commuting on a tube or, or on a bus and so on. So this is iBooks. Uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is comics all, or, or Marvel Comics. So here's the same comic. As you can see... This is the retina display, I mean, obviously. Yeah, I would say just looking at Hulk here, for example, um, not necessarily more uh, crisp, but definitely more vibrant from screen to screen. Let's try to get the same zoom level right about there. Put it right there. You can kind of gauge for yourself. Yeah, uh, definitely much more vibrant colors on the retina display, as well as, well, I mean, the width of this device is bigger than the length of this device, so, in terms of resolution, so, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the resolution really isn't a contest. You both get panel view. No lagging or anything like that. No, they're both very fluid. Yeah. So this is a, a latest issue. It actually had just come out, I think, today. So. Oh, I guess we won't ruin it for you guys. <laughs> yeah, no spoilers, but we did show you the last three <laughs> the pages. The very last. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I wanted to really show um, the distinction. And, and also, one of the things that bears a note is if you go to the store... and click on just added. 
you'll actually see HD. And you were there. Okay, so you can see that the same comic is there, but this says HD. And so this is taking advantage of the retina display. So the reason why comics didn't look as great on this is because it didn't have CMX HD, which Comixology basically powers the Marvel app. So you're not going to get HD comics. So if you're a comic book fanatic, and quality and visual aesthetics mean a lot for you, probably more lean towards the iPad with Retina display just simply because you get HD comics. But as a counterpoint, the HD versions of the comics often take up anywhere between 150 to 300 megs, whereas these comics, like the SD comics, only take up roughly about 45 megs. So it's a huge difference. So I would probably recommend if you're gonna get this, the Retina display, three comics probably go for like the 32 or the 64 because this is the 16 and with about 50 comics downloaded that's almost more than half of the device's memory and if you're not familiar with apple products uh, you're watching this for the first time uh, they do not have neither of these devices have sd card capabilities to expand the memory it's kind of a set amount so you can either purchase the 16 gig purchase the 32 or purchase the 64 Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at is magazines through Zinio. Okay, so just hit the home button to get out of here. And we're going to open up the Zinio application. So we have the same book here. It's a car magazine. So right away. Right away, it's bigger and crisper and just more vibrant. That That's kind of what you're going to be seeing on most photos. You're just going to be seeing just more vibrant colors, whiter whites. I mean, it's retina display for a reason. But I mean, it, you know, it's a fair point, but this still looks it pretty looks good. It looks really good. I mean, side by side, you notice the oh, differences. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, independently on its own, I mean, that looks... Nothing wrong with this at all. Yeah, I mean... That's looking mighty fine. That looks good. Yeah, let's zoom in on this. Like, I know this is like a hubcap and it's not the best image because it's a bit grainy, but I mean, fundamentally, because it's a grainy picture, it doesn't, you don't really you notice a huge difference. No, absolutely not. I mean, everything's coming across very clear and you can see everything's lightning fast as well. So you're not looking at any lagging. You know, you can turn pages as fast as you want and everything's just working and catch. it doesn't have to play catch up or anything like that. Yeah, so it's, it's quick and responsive. And, and when you read magazines, especially since magazines are very image heavy, being able to turn pages and being able to load up content is super essential. Yeah, so absolutely. you get a sense now on, on how magazines look. The final thing that we're going to look at is uh, videos and the internet experience and check out a game. So you can see we got a side by side going on here. This is when Captain America is a very tiny, tiny person. Hmm. Okay. So this is Netflix. Our initial impressions when we actually set up this video is that the iPad mini lags a little bit. It does. Upon when you press play, a lot of the times it doesn't go right away. So it was kind of a challenge to synchronize these. Uh, whereas we found the iPad 3, every time you press play, it just went. Yeah. So, so it, it seems like for videos, you know, we press play, it was fully buffered. It, it just played. This was always like a like a two or three second delay. It doesn't add up to much. When you look at them side by side, it makes a big difference. Right. Um, in terms of like video, you know, you both see the letterboxing. And then if you, you know, double click, it gets a little bit bigger. Um, what do you think about the overall video experience? Honestly, they're not that different at all. Um, I guess if you look at this patch right here, it may look, and this patch, it may look a little more green than this. You're getting a lot of yellows and grays coming through, but 
I mean, it's it's very it's not really noticeable unless you're doing this. You're you're sitting down both of these right next to each other and you're saying, "Hey, this is more green than that." Yeah. Other than that, no. I mean, if you just had this device in your hands and you're watching a movie, it's it's perfectly fine, especially because it's a nice small screen with very decent resolution. Yeah, I mean, you could easily hold this in one hand and watch a movie. Like, you know, I could hold this and it's no big deal. Whereas like this, it's a monster. This is heavy and I can't, you know, if I watch a movie, it has to be lined down or it needs to be like propped up or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is actually look at it, um, the web browsing experience. I'm getting there about the same time. Yeah, pretty similar. How is pinching and zooming? Lightning speed is always on Apple. They seem to have pinching and zooming down pretty well. No you artifacting or clipping. You see a little couple bits, but nothing too crazy. You're never going to be able to read that fast anyways. Yeah. But if you do read blogs, you know, you might want to skip down and stuff like that, you know? So pretty well the same sort of web experience, you know. A lot of the internet hasn't caught up to super high resolution images because of bandwidth, you know. You're not going to have one meg images all over your site that are retina display quality because it's just going to slow everything down. So the, most of the internet in general is geared towards GIFs and, and very low resolution images to ensure that everything gets loaded pretty quickly. So even just looking at, um, say like this, Air Patriots, which is... Amazon's first, Amazon Studios' first games, you don't really see a big difference. No. So, from an internet point of view, with the iPad 3 with the Retina display and the iPad Mini, not a huge gulf in no, terms of like not. what's going on here. So, we've evaluated pretty well the full reading experience, the internet experience, content distribution systems, and whatnot. Uh, what are your thoughts? Side by side, the iPad mini is obviously going to be outclassed by the iPad 3 because it's the same thing. It's just smaller. So you're seeing lower resolution, smaller screen, um, only two cores of graphics processor, whereas this has the uh, Apple A6X graphic processor chip, so you're running about quad core. On its own, which we've shown you in the, uh, the, the iPad mini review, it's a perfectly... It's a perfectly up-to-date, great, really fast um, device from Apple. And it's great. It's thin. It's light. Uh, it's, it's, it's powerful. Holds a lot of room. If you buy the 64 gig, there's, not, there's no drawbacks. But like I said, putting them side by side, you can't help feel that this is just bigger, better, faster, stronger. I mean, it's just obvious. I mean, it's a direct mimic of itself in a smaller form. It's a 9.7. Switch those numbers around. You get a 7.9. Yeah, I mean... It all depends what you want out of a unit. Uh, for me, I read a lot of comics, graphic novels, um, and a lot of web pages and ebooks. I like the bigger screen for all of that Absolutely. because you can just fit more content in it. The fonts are inherently a bit bigger. This is smaller, obviously. You have to turn the fonts up, lower resolution. So uh, text is not going to pop as clearly as it does on here and and comic books are not going to look as good ergo magazines as well anything really image heavy will always look better on the retina display versus the ipad mini it's two different classes of devices this is basically meant to be held in one hand extremely portable this does not fit in your pocket very easy it does but not very easy as we demonstrated <laughs> earlier but in essence it's the same device but you could see for yourself that it's very small and so we're going to actually compare this against the Amazon Kindle Fire HD and compare it against the Barnes & Noble Nook Tablet HD and HD+. Plus. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodyreader. And for all the latest news, previews, and everything else, bookmark goodyreader.com slash blog is your number one destination for news and everything like that. So for a Goody Reader and a review of the iPad Mini versus the iPad 3 with Retina Display. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.